Welcome back everyone to another weather at a glance video. In today's forecast, we are going over our fourth preliminary winter forecast for the winter season of 2023, all coming up in just a bit. All right, before we get into today's video, I do want to go over what kind of patterns we can be expecting to influence this winter. The weather is affected by so many various patterns, but the key patterns I want you to focus on today are El Nino, NAO, and PNA. Those are going to be kind of our key factors that I want to discuss and talk to you about in this video. Now, regarding our forecast maps, we're going over our temperature anomaly forecast map, our precipitation anomaly forecast map, our snowfall anomaly forecast map, and our overall forecast map that we will be going over at the end of the video. Now, on our first slide, we're going over our temperature anomaly forecast map here, and we're going to start off here in the north. We are expecting slightly warmer conditions, so slightly above here, anywhere from Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan, and we go over here to San Francisco. We do see anywhere within this slightly orange region, this light orange region here, we see slightly above average conditions expected. So this includes Minneapolis, just north of Salt Lake City, and also San Francisco. Now, like I say in every video, these changes are slight and we're not going to see a drastic change. So it's not going to hike up 10 degrees above average. That's not what this is saying. This is going to be a slight increase, just slightly warmer overall throughout your winter season. Now, moving on to the dark orange region here, we have our above average temperatures. And this includes much of the northern United States, except for the northeast over there. But we do see the northwest and the north central United States. All of this is included in this above average region here and we do see anywhere including oregon portland oregon seattle washington those are our two major cities within this and just north of san francisco but we do see here you will likely expect a few degrees above average so this is really where you're going to see those temperature hikes this is where you're likely going to notice those warmer conditions this winter now on the contrary we move down south here uh, anywhere from Washington, D.C., all the way through Kentucky, down through Oklahoma City, and much of the south here we do see is in this slightly below average region. So like the slightly above, it's not going to be a drastic change here. We're just expecting some cooler conditions here overall for much of these areas. Now for our next region, this is our below average region. This is where you will likely be noticing some cooler conditions overall. So this is where you're going to see those definitely chillier conditions. It's going to be colder down here this winter, um, simply because obviously cold conditions affect the south every Every year but you can already see it as of the last week or so we've been seeing those colder temperatures move in with this big cold front and this big system that moved through and that's going to be a common pattern this winter and we're going to see a lot of cooler conditions down here for the south and it's really just going to be a chilly winter overall now moving on to our next slide we're looking at a precipitation anomaly forecast map and here we're going to start up here in the northwestern united states with this slightly below average region now, this is contrary to the other video because before we did have a whole giant region here for the West that was slightly below, and we even had a below average region. But as of recent analytics and how we've been seeing the dynamics change for this winter, um, basically shaped as what we've been seeing so far and new forecast model runs coming out, we are expecting slightly below conditions here for the Northern Rockies. And we're going to keep things pretty average for Seattle and Portland, Oregon, simply because we do see a lot of onshore systems that move off of the Pacific Ocean at times and will be affecting these areas quite fairly often now moving over here to the east we do see a lot of these areas are expected to have slightly above average conditions so we do see here anywhere from maine all the way down through ohio and much of the southern united states here are expected to have slightly above average conditions so again nothing too crazy here we're just expecting some slight increases in your precipitation you may notice a little bit of wetter conditions but nothing really too drastic of a change overall now the big region that everybody's been talking about anywhere from the mid-atlantic through much of the northeast we are expecting above average conditions and this is likely going to influence a very snowy winter with those cooler conditions and with this increased precipitation we likely will see some big snowstorms we're going to get into that on the next slides but here you can see this is going to be a pretty wet winter for you guys in this area we have charlotte north carolina washington dc New York City and Boston, Massachusetts. So a lot of cities, major cities that will be impacted by this region if this stays consistent. Now, here's typically the part of the forecast that everybody wants to know about. Obviously, when we think about winter, we think about snowfall. What's going to happen with our snowfall? Well, here's our snowfall anomaly. Much like the other anomalies, this is going to show you whether you're going to be having above average conditions or below average conditions. So here first, we're starting off in the slightly below average region. Obviously, we discussed that slightly below average precipitation region and precipitation regards snowfall so anything here that really is going to move through slightly below average we are expecting slightly below average snowfall so obviously tons and tons of snowfall for the northern rockies we see that every single year so slightly below average may not even be noticeable at all but we are expecting some slightly decreased conditions overall so 
any skiing, anything that really goes on up here is not really going to be impacted significantly. I do believe that this is still going to be a good season because we have been seeing a lot of systems move through here. But I do believe that at times we could see some decreased conditions for your snowfall. Now over here in the east, we do see a slightly above. I do believe an active store pattern is going to be influencing this area for much of the winter. We do see we are going to have that polar jet stream influence from the north here often. And then we are going to see that subtropical, that Pacific jet stream that kind of dips down here, goes in more of a subtropical mode here. And then we do see that influence these areas as well. So not only do we have the potentials for nor'easters, we do see that we have two different jet streams influencing the same area quite often. That's going to lead to ingredients for some big winter storms for these areas and overall snowy conditions often now on our final region here we have our above average region and as you suspected this is going to be a really snowy place now for the past couple years we haven't seen any snowfall for the philadelphia area for a lot of the coastal areas now this doesn't mean you're going to get pounded on the coastal areas that doesn't mean you're going to see feet of snowfall obviously when we talk about snowfall our mid levels are a significant indicator of whether you will see snowfall accumulation or not so basically here along the coastline, that could be a zero for you guys, depending on what we see move through. If we have the cold air set up prior to the storm moving through, we may see pretty significant snowfall accumulations along the coastline, but definitely deeper as you go into this region, you are going to see some big snowfall accumulations this winter. Um, this is very typical with what we've seen in 2016, and we are expecting that to be very similar to what we're seeing this winter now on the big colorful map here this is the overall forecast map basically giving you a summarization of what you can expect to see this winter so moving on to the northwest here we see wet at times and here you can see basically it's pretty brief wet conditions at times so uh, basically what that means is you will still see your typical wet conditions for much of the pacific northwest we do see a lot of that um, but it's really not going to be suppressed too much but it will not be above average like it has been during the La Nina years. So it's not going to be storm after storm after storm, but we will still see a lot of those coastal storms move on to Oregon and Washington and Northern California. So still pretty wet, but not as wet as it has been. Now to the south here, we have a very large region on and off. Now this may confuse you a little bit when you think about it, but really we're expecting a bit of mixed conditions here. So we are expecting the drier conditions and the warmer conditions that we see for much of these areas down in the winter time, but we also see the potential for occasional systems to kind of shove down here and provide some wetter conditions and cooler conditions for much of the Southwestern United States. So a lot of these areas will likely see precipitation this winter. And if you're up in the mountainous regions, you may see some good snowfall as well, but that depends on whether we see how many systems we see move through this area. So it could be a give or take. Now, before you go off into the chat and say, whether at a glance, every single year, you have mountain snow on your forecast. I understand. We do keep this region here every winter because typically these areas are impacted significantly and a lot of people don't live up in these mountainous regions deep in the Rockies. But if you do, you understand typical snowfall conditions every year, it's gonna be mountain snow. Even this year too, we are still expecting mountain snow. So don't think I'm trying to just get away easy here and mark this typical location down, we are still expecting a lot of mountain snow, even with those slightly decreased amounts up there for the Northern Rockies. So yes, all these areas are expecting a good bit of snowfall this winter, actually a significant amount depending on where you are, and you are likely still going to see those large amounts of snowfall like you see every year. So there's really no other name I could give this region except for the typical mountain snow it sees every year. Now, moving off to the east here, we have anywhere from St. Louis all the way to Denver, Colorado, and back here into the Rockies, we do see Storm Genesis. Now, this is the same region I had on my last forecast map, and I am keeping this similar because basically there's really no other way to describe this. Um, this is going to be the birth region for much of our storms. So we're going to see the jet stream, particularly the subtropical jet stream, kind of swoop down here gather moisture from the Gulf Coast, and we are going to see it carry up and even up into the Northeast. That, so a lot of these areas, a lot of the storms that are going to be over here in the Eastern United States will be affected and kind of formed over here in the Great Plains. So we do see some good storm chances here on the Great Plains. It depends on whether we have cold air available or whether it's going to be warmer. So that's going to indicate what kind of precipitation you will see, but we are expecting a good bit of snow here as well. So a lot of areas that will likely see a good bit of snowiness this year too, but not indicating above average just yet as we see. Now down here to the southeast, we have our cooler and wet region. So pretty self-explanatory. We have cooler conditions and more wet conditions throughout the winter. Uh, this is going to be a nice relief for Texas because I know it has been blistering down there all summer and throughout much of the spring as well. So guys, do bear with me here. I know we're just coming out of a very hard season. 
but I am going to see some better conditions coming your way hopefully here soon. Uh, we do see cooler and wet conditions overall with the type of dynamic that we're seeing set up. That's going to be much better for you guys than what we have been seeing the past couple months. Now up here to the north, we do see for much of the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, occasional storms. So typically with El Nino, we see some drier conditions for Ohio Valley, but this may not be the case for this winter. And I'm going to tell you why. We have been seeing a common pattern where, like I said, this is where our storm genesis is. We do see these low pressure systems develop off of the Rockies, off of the east side. And these are likely going to carry either eastward or they will go northeastward into this area. And we also see with the way that our polar jet stream may be affecting the northern areas of this region, we also will see systems come down to this region as well. So we're not going to see frequent snowstorms moving through this area, but occasional storms, maybe one or two a month that kind of put a dusting down. Maybe they put some more significant totals down. We may see some big snowstorms come through this area. But overall, I am still expecting snowy conditions for this area, just less frequent than it usually is. Now, over here to the east, we have our big snow region. This is where you're going to see a lot of those big storms come through, and I am expecting a lot of snowfall to accumulate here. Um, definitely above average conditions overall. Some of these are in the slightly above average, but we are expecting those big storms to move through here, frequent big storms. That doesn't mean you're going to see one every single week. They may be spread out over the course of a month or so, maybe you won't have one one month. But what I'm saying is you're going to see snowfall and big snowfall this winter. We saw this with 2016, and I'm not going to sit here and try to claim that that's what's going to happen. But we have seen similar stories starting to pop up about 2016. And I do believe that that could be a similar influence to what we're seeing this year. Now, over to the east, this is another very typical region, but this year it is definitely going to be very prevalent with what we've been seeing with the pattern. And here you can see we are expecting nor'easter conditions for much of these areas. So this is just very typical for this region, but we are expecting nor'easter conditions. Um, typically with negative NAO pattern that we are expecting to have this winter. And with the El Nino overall, we are expecting cooler and wet conditions to come down here, but then we see that subtropical jet stream swoop up and kind of push northeast and that's going to create a nice dynamic for these nor'easters to form and we also will see a lot of big snow like i said we're going to see big snow come down from the polar jet stream but this is going to be a very busy season for this area because of how we have two jet streams coming in and meeting at one spot very busy guys so uh keep in mind that that's kind of what we're seeing so el nino negative neo pattern that's kind of what's influencing this area going to be a big season for these areas over here overall. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. I want to personally thank our channel members. We have David Hunter. Thank you so much for being a channel member. You help and support what we do here. I would ask you to consider subscribing for more US forecasts free of charge and I would ask you to consider following the Weather at a Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.